Hello and welcome to Python tutorial 8 on for statements. The for statement is used to loop over items of any sequence like an arithmetic series or a list. The Python range function is used in the for statement to create a sequence of numbers. As in the while statement, the continuous statement skips the remaining statements in the for block of code. Also, as in the while statement, the break statement ends the for statement. The for statement may have an else block of code. Now let us see the format of the for statement. First, we have the for. This is followed by one or more variables followed by in, followed by any sequence. It can be an arithmetic series or a list, followed by colon, and then a block of code. This block of code is run by assigning the variable each value in the sequence. Once the entire for block of code is executed for every value in the sequence, the else block of code is executed. Now let us see examples of for loops. So I already have a script with a variety of for loops. So let us see the first one. Now this is the for loop and here we can see that the entire for statement is there and it has the for block of code which is just one statement print i and then there is a else block of code also which has a print statement now within the for statement we use the range function now range 6 means all numbers from 0 to but excluding 6 which means numbers 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so the block of code just has print i so it is going to print each value of i as as i takes each value in the range so let us run this and here we can see that i has taken values 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 now let us see the other example Now this is a for loop and here I have put in a continuous statement for i in range 6 that means range of numbers from 0 to 5 within the for block of code there is an if statement if i is equal to 3 continue. So what continue will do is it will skip the remaining statements of the for block. So it will skip the print statement. Now let us run this and see. So here we can see that it has printed the numbers 0, 1, 2, 4 and 5. So it has skipped printing 3 because when i was 3 the continue statement was executed. Now instead of continue we can give break statement and what break does is that it ends the for statement. Another thing with the break statement is that the else block of code will not be executed. So first i will become 0, it will print 0, then i becomes 1, it prints 1, then i becomes 2, it prints 2, when i becomes 3, the break statement is executed, so the loop ends and even the else block will not be executed. So let me run this and see what we get. So we get i values 0, 1 and 2. Now let us see another example. Now the range function can start from a non-zero number also. So here we have given the range as for i in range 2, 2 but excluding 6. So i is going to take the values 2, 3, 4 and 5 and it is going to print these values. So let us run this and see. So it has printed 2, 3, 4 and 5. 
so we can start the range at any number not just zero now we can have an arithmetic series where we are increasing the numbers not by one but by some other number so here we have the range function and here there are three values in the range function we have the starting value is 1 the ending value is 10 and the step is 3 that means i is going to take value 1 then 1 plus 3 4 then 4 plus 3 7 but 10 will not be there because the end of the range is not taken so let us run this and see what values of i it is printed so it is printed 1 4 and 7 and as with the previous for loops the else block of code has also been executed now let us see a negative step which is the negative increment and here we are counting in the reverse direction the starting number is 10 in the range the ending number is 0 and the step is minus 2 so what's going to happen is it's going to have the range from 10 to 1 because the end is not included so we are going to have the numbers as 10 8 6 4 2 but not 0 so we are going to print the numbers from 10 to 2 so let me run this and here are the numbers 10 8 6 4 and 2 so we can have the negative step also now let us see one more example and here we have a list the name of the list is animals basically a list can contain values of different data types we we'll li see lists later on also so we have three members of this list which is bear deer and moose now in the for loop we have for x in animals so x is going to get each value in the animals list first it is it is going to get bear then deer and then moose and it prints whatever is the string that we have and then number of letters and then length of that string so let us run this now so here we can see it has printed each member of the list bear with length of 4 deer with length of 4 and moose with length of 5 now we can also have a nested loop so let us see an example of a nested loop and I'll explain what is a nested loop now this is the for statement and here we can see that the first statement is for and every other statement within for is indented so this is a complete for block of code now within this for block of code we have another for statement and within this for statement we can see again it is indented so this is one complete for loop within the outer for loop so this is called a nested loop now this script finds out the prime numbers so we are running the outer for loop from 2 to 9 because 10 will be excluded so i is going to get the values 2 3 4 until 9 so we start with saying prime is equal to true prime is a boolean variable and we are assigning it a value true so it prints the value of i then for each value of i for example if i is equal to 5 the inner loop checks division with numbers from 0 2 to 4 so for j in range 2 to i so i is 5 so j will get the values 2 3 and 4 so it uses the remainder operator if i percent j is equal to 0 that means i is divisible by some number from 2 to 4 and then it assigns prime is false and it breaks 
the thing with the break statement is that it breaks the innermost loop so it is going to break the loop of j and then it is going to check the next value of i so let us run this and see how it works so it says finding out if 2 is prime so it finds that 2 is prime because j is from 2 to 1 so basically j loop is not executed at all so it says 2 is a prime number then it i takes the value of 3 so it checks divisibility with just 2 and 3 is not divisible by 2 so 3 is a prime number then i takes the value of 4 it checks divisibility with 2 yes 4 is divisible by 2 the remainder is 0 it breaks the loop 4 is not prime then i takes the value of 5 checking divisibility with 2 it is not divisible by 2 it is not divisible by 3 it is not divisible by 4 so it says 5 is a prime number then 6 checks divisibility with 2 yes 6 is divided by 2 the loop breaks 6 is not a prime so here we can see the outer loop is going from 2 to 9 and for each value of the outer loop the entire inner loop is being executed then with 7 i is 7 it checks with j is equal to 2 3 4 5 and 6 and finds that none of the remainders is 0 so 7 is a prime number then it checks with 8 checking divisibility with 2 8 divides by 2 so 8 is not a prime number it breaks the loop then it checks with 9 checking divisibility by 2 no it is not divisible by 2 Divi divided by 3 yes the remainder is 0 so the outer loop breaks 9 is not a prime number so that is about the for loop statement thank you for watching this tutorial and see you in the next tutorial